Hello, welcome to another video. This one is going to be particularly nerdy. So if you're a skincare dermatology nerd like I am, then hopefully you will enjoy this video. Uh, this is gonna be a two-part series. Today, I wanna lay down the foundation for the physiology of the skin in terms of fibroblasts, collagen production, and peptides, and aging. In other words, this video is a foundation to really understand the next video, which is going to be about microneedling, PRP, PRF, and exosomes. So we'll go into the details of those types of therapies. And so with a lot of these treatments, you can use your own body's platelets, your own body's growth factors and cytokines to actually get this healing response. And before I forget, uh, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. And also, if you'd like, you can hit the notification bell. That way, when the next one comes out, you'll be notified. Starting with fibroblasts, the fibroblasts in the skin are kind of like the ruling body or the government. They keep all the checks and balances and they create this soup, this ocean, that they actually live in called the extracellular matrix. This is a medium through which all the peptides, enzymes, messengers can travel through where all the cells live. And this entire matrix is held together by fibrils of collagen and elastin. So the fibroblasts produce collagen, elastin, lamellin, fibronectin, they produce a whole bunch of different proteins. They create this extracellular matrix. They produce sugars called glycosaminoglycans. They are like the hyaluronic acids that suck up water to plump and hydrate and, and keep everything bouncy. Here's the catch. The fibroblasts, when they sense that the collagen they're living in is a little rugged, a little unhealthy, a little lax, they signal enzymes to chop up that collagen. So they turn on collagenases like the matrix metalloproteinases that turn on and clear out that collagen. Now, in the case of a wound or healthy young skin, that is replaced by nice new collagen. However, as we age, we begin to lose collagen at a rate of approximately 1% a year, and we essentially stop producing elastin. And so if the fibroblasts say, you know, this collagen is kind of getting old and it's not very good anymore, so let's get rid of it. Uh, that's all fine and dandy, but then they don't signal to make more. So the less the fibroblasts are attached and really anchored into nice healthy collagen they become lazy and sleepy and senescent so they, they almost become inactive and that's why our skin turnover slows down we produce less collagen we start to get saggy skin we get texture pigmentation it's just it's not as active so we need to wake up the fibroblasts tell them to get busy and basically behave in a more youthful way. And simply put, all of the treatments that we do in cosmetic dermatology, aesthetics, whether they're lasers, energy-based devices, microneedling, or application of topical creams, essentially what we're trying to do is say, fibroblasts, wake up, get stimulated, and start acting and behaving as though you're younger. In addition to that, we need to feed the skin and the fibroblast nutrients that they absolutely need. For example, our skin and connective tissues are dependent on vitamin C. Without vitamin C, our body gets scurvy. So vitamin C is important. Copper is another essential element that is a cofactor for tyrosinase for even skin tone, as well as the production of collagen and elastin. And of course, vitamin A, which is important in our diet, but we also apply it topically in the form of a retinol or tretinoin. So all of these products, these cofactors, these minerals, vitamins, create the ingredients necessary for the skin to be able to do its job. And peptides are the key elements that help the communication between all of these cells so that everyone is working together. 
Now let's talk about peptides. Peptides are a string of a minimum of two amino acids. Our body produces amino acids and some amino acids we need to consume from our diet. In single form, they're called amino acids and when they start to link up together, they become peptides. And as various chains of peptides kind of twist and form into their own shapes, they can combine with other peptides and these chains form proteins. And you might wonder whether consuming collagen peptides is beneficial. And honestly, if you consume a healthy balanced diet and you consume a sufficient amount of protein, the protein you eat will be broken down by enzymes into peptides and amino acids, and the body then converts them into whatever amino acids and proteins the body needs. Having said that, I will say though that I do take collagen peptides and it's not so much for my skin, but I have a knee injury and I find that when I do take the peptides, my knee feels better. Though I know that collagen peptides have more ingredients in them than just the peptides, so it could be other factors contributing to it. Or maybe it's placebo, it's just in my head, I like to think that they help and so my body makes it happen, who knows. Okay, back to skincare peptides. There is such a thing as the 500 kilodalton rule. And what that means is now we're talking about the size of these peptides. And in general, peptides smaller than 500 kilodaltons will absorb into our skin. So if we apply it topically, it's gonna get in there. Uh, products that are bigger than 500 kilodaltons will sit on the skin surface and not get in they won't be able to get through the skin barrier and that's where formulations and encapsulation technologies come into play to help overcome this 500 Dalton rule and create mechanisms in which larger ingredients can penetrate the skin into the deeper layers. The term peptide is a very, very broad and generic term in and of itself it just says that there's a string of amino acids and they can have all kinds of functions. So there are enzymes that are peptides like the collagenases that break down collagen. There are carrier peptides that carry other molecules from point A to point B. There are messenger peptides that serve the function of sending a message from one cell to another. There are growth factors, which are peptides. Hormones are peptides. Peptides can also get in the nucleus and help repair DNA. They can also act to inhibit neurotransmission, meaning a signal from a nerve to a cell. They can stimulate the fibroblast, send a message to the fibroblast to tell it to start making sugars like glycosaminoglycans or collagen, for example. And they can act as humectants like hyaluronic acid where they hold on to water. There's a group of peptides called cytokines, and these peptides are part of the immune system. They get stimulated when there's a wound injury. When our skin gets damaged, they turn on and they basically organize the entire healing response. So both eliminating uh, the possibility of infection, any microbes, uh, building new blood vessel, a blood vessel supply to the area of injury, closing the gap if there's an open wound, so producing collagen and the extracellular matrix and connecting the cells together and connecting that milieu together and helping close up the skin barrier. So you can essentially think of these cytokines as growth factors, and there are many different types of cytokines in the immune system. We have chemokines, interferons, interleukins, leukokines, and tumor necrosis factor. Those are all different types of cytokines. And what the cytokines do is they bind to receptors on the surface of cells, and nearly every single cell in our body has little cytokines sitting in receptors and they signal to one another, in other words, they communicate and send messages to tell cells to grow or not grow, increase growth rate, stop growth rate. So they're also very important in cancer. They're like little watch guards that sit on cells and monitor what's going on, whether they need to turn any activities on or whether everything is doing fine. So now that we have a little bit of an idea about peptides and cytokines, Next time we're gonna get into platelets and how a lot of these cytokines live in platelets. 
and what happens and how platelets, which are also part of the immune system, how they respond when there's an injury. So stay tuned in the next video, we're gonna talk about what we learned in this video and how we can apply it for anti-aging uh, treatments using our own body's immune system for regeneration and repair. So if you have any questions on this one, leave them down below and otherwise I will see you in the next one.